Hello, welcome back to Amiga Pistons part three of our Forged Mini Piston video. And I'm here with one of the directors of Amiga, Phil. You're going to show us through the final operations, the most intricate okay. parts yeah. of creating one of these Forged Pistons. And you know pretty much everything there is to know about machining these pistons. Uh, a fair bit. I've been here since I was 14, so I'm 53 now, so work that out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, after the last film, the next stage is the um, circuit grooving, which is done by Carl in the workshop. And the lube grooving, which is very important, that's a little reservoir for to hold oil to lubricate the pin. So what's happening on the first operation on the CNC then? So we've got the, is this the interior? Panels, first operation or? it does is the facing of the bosses, that's to give it the right clearance on the conrod. There's a different size little end on different conrods, so yeah, how do you yeah. work that one out? Normally you just have a bit of a one millimetre clearance or so. Some pistons are piston guided conrods and they only have 0.15 clearance. But for this one it's uh, it's just a nice running clearance, let some oil get up there, get into the hole. If you have it too close you won't get any oil splashed up. You get some from the sides but uh, on a full skirt piston that can be shrouded. Okay. Just to keep it cool. Yeah, yeah, keep it lubricated. Okay. We put two in because when you want to get the circlip out, if you've only got one, sometimes the circlip's rotated and the gap of the circlip's there. So you can't get your removal tool in to get it out. That's just to put a scriber or a small screwdriver down to, to get the uh, circuit out of the piston. And these are on the die-cast pistons as well, even though you yeah. can run those with a fixed pin yeah, yeah. if you want to. Yeah, people have got the choice then. The next operation is the circuit grooves. Okay, so the circuit groove obviously to hold the circuit in place hold. when you're going floating, fully yeah, floating. fully floating. Keep the pin in place. You don't want it coming out. No. It shatters the piston. Makes a mess. Yeah. And the vertical lube grooving or the linear lube grooves, which are in the hole, are there to retain any oil that's splashed up from the crankcase. That lubricates the pin. Now these grooves, it's quite hard to see them under normal light, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah. if we get, get the camera and we'll show you that with a flash. And what's that for, Phil? That's to retain any oil that's splashed up from the, from the crank, crankcase. Okay. It stays in there and it lubricates the pin. Sure, okay. And then obviously the marking on top is there for identification and traceability purposes. This marking machine has auto-sense technology, so when it marks the piston, it comes down, bounces off the top just to make sure it's actually got the marking surface, and then marks it so we can mark flat tops, we can mark dishes, and we can also mark ones with a intruder. After that is uh, the elliptical turning. Okay. The pistons aren't round, they're elliptical, and they've also got a complex shape that way as well. I think that's why I incorrectly called oval turning last time. Yeah, well, in the lips and level, it's interchangeable, really. Just sounds more technical if you say lips. So, pistons aren't round? No. The piston's got all these shapes on because it doesn't expand in a uniform way. The top of the piston will be the smallest because the combustion chamber's there, so that's the extreme temperature range of the engine. It's also oval, or elliptical, however you want to say it, because the heat generated in the pin bore conducts along here and causes these to grow more than that. So if you measure that there and that down to there, that will be smaller. We remove metal where it's going to expand more. So at running temperature, it's virtually straight and nearly round. Normally the piston will be sitting there on the fixture and rotating at 1200 RPM, but we haven't got the fixture in at the moment. Okay, here's a program I've created to show you how the skirt profile is generated along the piston. Those movements have been magnified around 100 times. This is the ceramic quill generating the ovality, or the ellipse, super slow motion. And this is a little program I wrote just to show you how the two axes work within each other. So you've got the black axis on the outside moving in the same direction as the ceramic quill, but that's mainly used for positioning. And the ceramic quill is what generates the profile along the skirt and around the periphery at the same time. We do hold plus or minus three microns all day long on that machine. We guarantee plus or minus five, but it normally holds plus or minus three, which is very tight. So if you didn't have this elliptical shape on it, it would definitely seize up there. And if you've got it running a bit too tight in the conrod, it's even worse, it, it gets even hotter. So we always recommend 30 microns clearance in the conrod. 
Um, and other sorts of pistons need more ovality than this piston. Some need less. Like a piston like this, for instance, you usually put a lot more ovality on these. It's just got nowhere to go. The heat has to go along there and push those out. Okay. Whereas this has got quite a bit of metal around here to absorb the heat. So how do you design that then? Do you have some kind of software or is this just learned we, over the years? We design it, um, it mostly, mostly from experience to be honest nowadays. Over the years we've come up with a good vertical profile that works nearly every time without fail. And ovality is on experience, they're high revs, uh, what the revs are, they need more ovality if they're going to rev higher because okay. they get hotter. You've also got the vertical shape there because that obviously is right in the combustion chamber. So the most heat's there. Okay. So that will be the smallest part of the piston. Sure. The largest part of this piston is probably about there. And it gets smaller in every direction. So when you measure your piston to bore clearance, it's not right at the bottom? No, no. It's, it's about there. Okay. It varies on different pistons, but we'll never put it right at the bottom. We like to work in conjunction with the customer if they can send us some back. We can see if there's any areas that we could reduce the clearance or put more clearance on. Yeah. If it looks like it's running a bit hard here, we can put some more ovality on or just put more ovality on just in this area of the piston. Sure. And it's almost like um, an hourglass shape then. But these A-series pistons these have been these developed these for donkey's years yeah, now. Yeah, so that's solid. You, you know where they are. Yeah. Okay. And I suppose these are... Not low performance for us, but in terms of everything that you do. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, something like this piston is the MotoGP Ducati 19,000 RPM. That has to stand five hours on the Monza cycle on the dyno to get in the engine. At 19,000 RPM. On right. the Monza cycle, which is 70% full throttle. So you know for well that the, the forged that would, yeah. mini pistons are, are going to last yeah, then. Yeah. Are they built to the same kind of tolerance? Yeah, everything is made the same. We, we over-engineer some pistons, to be honest, but you have to do your best every time. You can't cut corners. Sure. Your pride won't let you do it. So last time we showed the the pin bores being bored, yeah. one of the final stages then is going to be to hone them to get yeah. that, that final size. How close do you get that tolerance? We put two to three tenths of a thou clearance on the pin in this piston. Um, and it doesn't venture outside those sizes. It's plus two to plus three tenths of a thou every single one. There's also, with the honing, it puts a cross-hatch finish in the bore. This also helps with oil retention, a bit like on a cylinder liner, Sure. where you plateau hand the cylinder liner. Similar sort of idea, it's um, cross-hatched, holds more oil. If you think of two smooth surfaces like a pin and a smooth pin bore, it'll work like a slip gauge. Stick together. Yeah. So you want some roughness, it's the same with the piston skirt. That's not smooth for a reason. That's like a screw thread, really, a really fine screw thread, and that holds the oil. Okay. One of the things I haven't mentioned yet is probably the piston ring grooves, and we've got some footage here of one of the cool tools that you've got to make sure that's flat. How yeah. vital is that, that the piston ring sits flat? It's extremely vital, particularly on the top ring. That one has to seal. If you've got any unevenness on the flatness of the ring groove, the ring won't be able to conform and seal properly because it'll have gaps underneath it. So if you've got a big hump like that, the ring won't be able to conform to it. But if it's a gentle, gradual one, the ring will be fine. So we don't allow any more than three or four microns all the way around, over 360 degrees. And that's really what makes a big difference on yeah. these performance pistons. It stops any blow-by. Have you ever put a standard piston in the gauge to see how it comes up? Um, we've put some other manufacturers' pistons in there, yet, yeah. And it's like looking at a roller coaster. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no, no, no names, but uh, yeah, standard pistons. Some of them are very good, but the odd one. So now we're going to be balancing the pistons. Stick them on the scale. There's 280 grams. Zero that. Stick that as the base. Next piston on. Perfect. 0.3 of a gram, 0.5 of a gram over, 1.1 gram. So we balance these pistons within half a gram of each other. It's minus. So now we're just going to pack the pistons. Pins already in. 
and depending on whether it is a float, fully floating or press fit pin, it will come with circlips. Circlips, ring fitting instructions. Okay, so that's it then for our series on forged Amiga pistons. I hope that was interesting in some way. Thanks very much to Phil, uh, Alex behind the camera, and everyone else here at Amiga for their time. And if you're keen on our videos, our channel, make sure to click like and subscribe, and we'll bring you some more soon.